Hello all! Today I'm going to unbox Clash of Sovereigns, The War of Austrian Succession, 1740 to 1748. This is a game designed by Bob Kalinowski and uh, published by GMT and is a successor or takes off uh, or is a prequel maybe for um, Clash of Monarchs, uh, another one of uh, Kalinowski's games. Uh, this one's dealing with the Seven Years War in Europe and again published by GMT Games. This is a card-driven game, so it has the point-to-point -point map and cards that move play forward. And I believe this is following in the same uh, tradition. Take a look here. And there we have it. There's your point-to-point -point map. There are the cards. Uh, you've got counters. It's two to four players, three to 12 hours. Uh, complexity is a six. Uh, and solitaire suitability is a three. Uh, I don't know if there's a solitaire. Uh, well, yeah, it, it, it's with the card play. It's kind of hard to, you know, necessarily do the solitaire uh, aspect. Um, let's take a look at the description a little bit here on the back of the box. Clash of Sovereigns is a two to four player card driven game of the War of Austrian Succession. The Bourbon, which are French, Spanish and Prussian and the and Pragmatic, Austrian, British, Piedmont. Alliances battle across Central Europe from Paris to Konigsberg and Naples to London. Uh, Clash of Sovereigns is a free-willing, fast-playing nephew of the highly regarded Clash of Monarchs. The game features a 12-hour campaign, plus three shorter scenarios. The French, Prussian, Spanish, Austrians, and British Piedmonters each have their own separate card decks divided into early, middle, and late war periods. That's a common thing for uh, card-driven games is to you know, have different periods so that you can kind of stage out the history. Uh, so you can have the, the later cards are events that took place later in that timeline of what you're trying to cover. It has distinctive national tactics and troop quality factors are captured by army battle ratings, which evolve over time. That's interesting. And event and battle tactics cards. A simple but significant naval game simulates naval operations in the Mediterranean Atlantic, including the annual Bourbon Treasure Fleet's risky voyage home. So it looks pretty interesting. It looks like they've they've done uh, some a, a few things a little bit different uh, from uh, Clash of Monarchs, but yet you know still some. I think there's some still DNA in there uh, that uh, if you're a fan of Clash of Monarchs, then you'll probably be a fan of this. I want to uh, set, thank GMT Games uh, for sending me this. Uh, so I could take a look at it. This is a, this is a topic that's interesting to me as far as I like the strategic uh, level uh, play of this period. Uh, there's there's not a ton of games out there, but there are a few on the War of Austrian Succession, uh, including you know compasses, the War of Austrian Succession. Uh, this covers 1741 to 1748. This is based on their No Peace Without Spain system, um, which is a point-to-point -point, uh, map as well. So it'd be inter I'm, I'm really uh, uh, be interested in finding out how this not only differs from Clash of Monarchs, but also uh, from the uh, uh, Pragmatic War. Uh, from uh, from Compass and see how they how they treat things a little bit differently. Uh, the No Peace Without Spain system is is kind of a unique system to itself, uh, and this one I think is falls in more into the traditional uh, CDG type scope. But enough of all that. You want to see what is in the box? That's what you came here for, right? And I do not want to disappoint. So I, I really didn't know much about this. I heard a little bit about this. I, and I, I generally try to keep track of what's coming out with GMT games. And so I knew a little bit about this, but not – there's other stuff that I was tracking. There's other stuff that I was, you know, more interested in or, or had uh, 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 had played some stuff in the same space. And, and this one, of course, I, I have Clash of Monarchs, and I like Clash of Monarchs. I like how it plays. So, so this was a surprise and a, and a pleasant surprise when – uh, when I got this one because um, I had not, did not know as much about it, and yet I think I'm going to like it because I like Clash of Monarchs. So you got a typical GMT box here, nice and sturdy. Two dice right out of the box there. We're going to have these individual deck cards. 
individual card decks. How about that? Uh, as it's, and I think that is different. I, have, I haven't looked at uh, Clash of Monarchs in a while. I think that's different from Clash of Monarchs having the unique uh, decks. But I'd have to look at that. We'll we'll open we'll crack those bad babies open here in a second. Can't can't miss this one too. That one looks nice. Okay, we've got uh, some Arata. You know, it's nice that they give it to you in the box. I guess they just caught it at the last moment. Not you know, there's always Arata in the games, so um, you know, not not too bad. Look at that. Rules of play. Uh, and then you got playbook here. I wonder uh, if if the how close the rules of play cla uh, track Clash of Monarchs because it looks like it's not a series system, so it is a, its own standalone uh, game here. Let's turn it this way so we can look at it a little bit better. Here's your table of contents. We're looking at 28 pages with a full index on the back for ease of reference. That's nice. This is typical GMT format, dual column with some color throughout, you know, of counters and probably hopefully some examples of play. Let's start at the beginning here. And here's a, here's a description of the counters, which are mainly strength points. When you're dealing with the CDG, you're, you're primarily dealing with a strength point uh, aspect on the counters, but the leaders might have some more information, which they do here. There's an offensive dice roll modifier, activation point rating, defensive uh, dice roll modifier, and initiative. Plus, you have a name and a rank on there, so quite a bit of stuff there. Here's your game components. Um, here's all the different alliances. You've got a lot of different people uh, teaming up with each other, a lot of different factions teaming up with each other, so a lot of different colors here, so there's going to be a different counter mix. And you also have some of those colors represented on the, the board here, it looks like, too. This is an example of the board and some of the different spaces. Nice. Uh, okay. Here's some fleets. Here's strategy cards. Here's forces and commands. Leaders. And this is a strategic level game, so and, and leaders are going to be very important in how you move troops around. Sequence of play. About a page and a half there. Fortunes of war. Strategy cards. Some events here, powers and geopolitics. So there's 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 definitely some more politics going on in this game, and how uh, factions may enter the war or or who they align with. You got minor powers, uh, command point or CPS and force activation, interception. You know that's a common thing with the point to point. You know trying to intercept when someone's moving into a, a new space withdraw supply again this is strategic level so supply is going to be important your kind of your logistics irregular troops major battles you get some battle cards here worn and demoralized fortress and sieges fleet and sorties Winter Quarters, Reinforcement, Strength Points, or SPs, Monarchial Will, Victory Points. So this Monarchial Will is kind of like, um, you'll see that in, uh, oh, I see you see in World War II games, especially in the Pacific. You see it in um, Vietnam games, you know, uh, National Will and, you know, what's the most of the motivation to uh, fight or continue the fight. So that's interesting. We have a concept of that in here as well. Winning the game, and you have some optional rules here, and then credits. So, you know, uh, re robust rule set there. I'm not going to say this is a piece of cake. It, it, it's not, it, it doesn't look overly complex for a CDG, but, you know, there's quite a bit of stuff there. Here's your playbook. This is going to have different scenarios. So you got the three shorter scenarios, then you have that campaign scenario. Then you have a short campaign scenario. Looks like you got two short campaign scenarios. You have designer notes, card notes, and played events checklist. Okay, that's cool. So these are all the different scenarios and how you're going to set those up. So you're going to have all the different setups and different rules that, uh, that that's going to affect this different scenario. And kind of it's nice you got a whole board there to set it up. Then you have your victory, any special rules and victory conditions for the scenario. 
And you're going to have that for each of the scenarios. So quite a few scenarios in here. So you've got three short uh, and then uh, a campaign and then two short campaigns. So a lot of different variety here. Here's the designer notes. Give you some idea into the designer's mind on how he did this. And then you've got your plate events checklist. Okay, cool. All right. There you have that. Now we get into some of the uh, faction mats here. So we got Austrian mat. So you got your holding boxes for spring reinforcements, British uh, subsidy, a depot available. This is what is starting resources, army rating. Cool. Kind of reminds me of old Advanced Third, uh, uh, Fall of the Third Reich or Advanced Third Reich. The Fall of the Third Reich. God, what am I thinking? Anyway, the old uh, the old Avalon Hill game with the different player mats. Of course, they don't have all the boxes. You just have a holding box for the your SPs. There's the French and Barbarian. And they have different ratings for the different factions within there. You have Spanish and Prussian. British and Piedmont. And these are these are decent thickness. I mean, they're not bad. Okay. Then we've got a... What is this? Expanded sequence of play track. Well, that's interesting. Wow. Looks like swim lanes. You know? and for those of you in the, the business world. I don't know what that is. Um, Clash of Sovereigns here is a player aid. With your uh, CRT, Siege Table, Army Ratings, Naval Intercept, Fortunes of War, AP Allowance, AP Cost. So that's your action points. Okay, cool. So you've got two of those. Yes, two of those. And they're on thick stock. Then you have the... Uh, these are different... Uh, I wonder if these are different scenarios. I'm not sure about that. Then you got Clash of Sovereigns. Here's a Victory Point track. This is it looks like administrative track. Victory Point track, event track, monarchial will, diplomacy track, and leader arrival. So that's kind of cool. Nice little chart there. Good thick stock. Then uh, this is interesting. It's it's on glossy paper, but it's not thick stock. It's just glossy paper. This is the solo system. Oh, so there's a solo system in here. The CDG solo system. So I wonder if this is. Uh, Oh, yeah, and I have that solo system. Oh, that is cool. That is cool. Uh, I'm looking behind me to see if I can find what I did with my solo system, but I have it. It's on a shelf somewhere. But, um, oh, here it is. So if you've got the CDG solo system, if you have to have that die there, um, then you, too, can play Clash of Sovereigns solo. Oh, that's cool. That I did not. I did not know that was coming at all. Talk about a surprise. That's cool. So there you go. I can I have that, so I can play that solo. Then we've got the mat board here. Boo, 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 and then the counters. So let's let's do the mat board last and let's take a let's take a gander at the counters here. These are nice uh, uh, thick GMT counters. They pop out nicely. I don't even clip these. I know some people are compulsive, but uh, I think they punch out punch out fine without you know, there's no really unsightly nibs, and I, I don't think I need a punch. If I spend all my life punching, I never play, and I don't play enough anyway. That's kind of nice. Very, very nice colors on there. Information's clear. Then you've got their double-sided here. Then you've got some more here. A lot of British fleet. And these are double-sided as well. Then we have the third sheet, which are all these other powers that are involved here. So there's Russia. Here's Dutch. Usually Dutch get orange. Here's Spain. It's like Saxony. And a lot of administrative type markers. And these are double sided as well. This looks nice. This really does look nice. I, I think the counters, I don't know, I think they're a little bit better than what was in Clash of Monarchs. Um, at least they, they, I just, that's my 
that's my memory. Let's look at the map here. Oh, we still got to get to the cards, so we're not, we're not done yet. Oh, it's a paper map. And uh, kind of goes long ways here. So I might have to move out some room here so we can take a, a periscope. See what we have here. There's a lot of tracks up at the top here. So let's go here. Wow. Get a nosebleed. So you got Italy. You got a Bermud Army uh, battle ratings. You have Army some Army ratings on this table down here. You've got some inset boxes over here for India. And then you have some holding boxes in different areas. Uh, Austrian, uh, Austrian, it Italian, Italy, French Army, Italy. So you have different some different holding boxes here. Then you have all the different on the board. Again, this is a um, uh, car driven, so point to point type map. You'll be taking over these different areas. I imagine the color codes are like starting control for some of these areas. I didn't see a lot of control markers, so maybe it's not so much of a control as it's just having the unit there. You can see the top of my head there. Sorry about that. Let's, let's go down and get a little bit more of a view of the map right here. So you got some tracks, you got your turn track, your turn sequence, some more holding boxes. You got an Atlantic fleet here. And you've got some interception and withdrawal. So that's nice having that right on the map because those are things you're going to be doing quite a bit on the map and have, without having to refer to them. Then down here, you had your Mediterranean uh, fleet box as well. So that is the map of. Ooh. There we go, Clash of Sovereigns. So now we need to get into the some of these cards here, and there's several little decks here. So let's see what we have here. Start with this one first. You know, I don't need to go all the way up for that, all right? You guys are you're, you're getting woozy being up so so high right there. We'll go in a little bit more, set it on the map here, and see what we have in the cards. So if, if any of you are fans of Clash of Monarchs, uh, love to know what you think about this. Or if you have this already and have been playing it, love to know what you think about it as well. Here's Britain and Piedmont cards. So they have their own deck. Um, they're typical GMT cards. They're not super thick. They're not like, you know, brittly thin, but they're not, you know, the thickest of cards. But they're fine. You know, with that backdrop, it's a little hard to read some of the text on there. And it's really hard to read the numbers, especially you see that there. So that's a... Uh, that's going to be a little bit, you have to well lit area because that kind of gets faded in a little bit. So you have the cards here and these can be used for their action points or in <clears throat> and or their events. You've got to read up on exactly how you do that. This is like a one time event. So there's the British and Piedmont cards. Let's put them in Britain there. Next, we have the France and Spain allied during this period or working together somewhat. And I'll have the same back. And still a little hard to read those numbers in there. The text is a little bit better here. This is a little bit lighter backdrop, so it's a little bit easier to read this, in my opinion. But uh, those numbers can be might be a little bit of a chore. So there's France and Spain. Put them there. Next is Austria. They get their own deck. They don't share with anybody. Of course, this is the War of Austrian Succession, so they are the uh, they are a focal point of sorts. Well, wow, can't get into these here. So they have the same back. And, yeah, these are a little bit easier to read. The, the numbers are still, yeah, I don't know. That kind of engraved number there or whatever is, uh, I mean, I like the art, which you can see of it. So this is Austria. Then we have Prussia. Prussia gets their own deck, but it's, a, it's not a very big deck. So 
all the same backs. A little bit darker backdrop, and those numbers are, I think, are even harder to read here. Like, if you could you see that, that's a, I don't know. I think I would have filled it in with, like, a darker uh, ink or something, so you can see that a little bit better. So those are the different factions decks. Uh, then we have these. I want these like optional rules. Well, what are these? I like that. I like the back of that card. I'll get my thumb out of the way. Let's see what these cards are about. Huh. I don't know. Maybe these are optional rules. Land battles and ships at sea. So you got some events here. I don't know. Okay. It's different. Alrighty, well, there you have it. That is what you get in a box of Clash of Sovereigns. Uh, it's with a bonus solo play there. That's cool. Um, and, and, and that's what that whole CDG solo system is really based on, playing CDGs, <laughs> hence the name Solo. Golly, and I figured that out on my own. So we get this. Still not sure what this is. Got some player aids here. This is an interesting track. I mean, I got, I got some stuff I got. I got to do some research on here. I got to figure out what I'm doing with some of this stuff. Got the dice. You got the playbook. You got the rules of play. And then we got the errata. Well, we'll put that over off to the side here. Anyway, the, oh, counters. We can't, we can't forget the counters. So that is what you get in a box of Clash of Sovereigns. Thank you, GMT. Uh, for letting me look at this, I'm also going to play at this and uh, try to get some uh, after-action report or gameplay discussion on this as well. Maybe I'll do a comparison between that and Clash of Monarchs, and if I'm if I'm uh, uh, if I'm able or have the time, maybe I'll do even compare it to uh, a Pragmatic War uh, and, and cover games on the same period with different systems. Anyway, that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for stopping by. The best way I know that you stop by is by dropping me a comment. Let me know what you think about this game, Clash of Monarchs. Uh, anything that's on your mind, just keep it civil. Thanks for stopping by and have a good one. So we started in the Ancients period the, at the beginning of the week and then moved to the Musket and Pike period with the Siege of Rhodes and the English Civil War. Now we're into the flintlock and bayonet period where are we going next we're at 1740 to 48 what is next Thanks for watching!